Hey guys, welcome to the channel. So today we're going to be starting a new campaign series for Total War Warhammer 3, and we're going to be playing as Scarbrand, the Exiles of Corn. So this is definitely one of my favorite factions in the game. I just really like the way he plays. So faction effects, you replenish in foreign territory. Extra movement range after raising a settlement, all characters. And Scarbrand gets an additional 25% movement range after winning a battle, so you can get pretty far with Scarbrand. And he's a great melee fighter. Okay, let's get into it. We're playing a legendary difficulty, very hard battle difficulty. I'm gonna keep in game scenarios off. I don't mind them but i'm not a huge fan of them they tend to be a little bit tedious at times and ai yeah, stats are all the way up good just want to make sure okay let's get started So, playing as Corn in the beginning of the campaign, we're not going to be doing very much Empire building as we are just destroying, just blowing up settlements. Uh, main settlements we will take. We'll, we'll capture those <clears throat> because to occupy settlements as Corn. It requires skulls. So we only have so many skulls. It costs us 2,500 to occupy a settlement. So we're going to be occupying the main settlements and then eventually, with enough corn corruption, we'll settle the minor settlements. So that's how we'll quote unquote build our empire. But for the most part, our economy is going to be essentially war economy. So, let's see what trait we got on him. That's not terrible. These guys, I... I don't find them to be amazing fighters. At least not yet. At the beginning, uh, they're, they're okay, but... But I like the fact that they give extra campaign movement range. So, yeah, they're essential for your armies, but not necessarily amazing fighters yet. So, let's set up our technologies. First thing I always go for is Blood Feaster's banner gives us strength from flesh, while whoever has the banner on is in melee, then they'll be healing. And it makes our blood host a little bit cheaper. But mainly I'm getting it for the strength from flesh. So let's get that. Also your technology is cost skulls is corn. So everything costs skulls. So another reason that we're not going to be occupying too many settlements aside from the main settlements. And before we get started, we're going to do some skulls for the skull throne. So... That will give us <clears throat> various bonuses. The main one is going to be Summon from Beyond. We get two units of blood letters in the army. So... It'll essentially make Scarbrand's army larger without actually having to be larger. Now, the one thing I am going to do, I want to get this Chaos, or this Cultist of Corn. So, let's get him going. And also, Skull Throne uh, reduces your building time by one turn. So, another good reason to have this active as often as you can. So, essentially every ten turns. Alright. Let's go fight this guy. Okay, so 
close victory, but for anyone who who hasn't played Scarbrand before, let me show you a neat trick. Scarbrands can essentially solo the entire army to a degree. Okay, so I'm going to have Scarbrand up here, and the rest of the army is just going to hang out and chill. These guys will be over here just to run down routing units. They're not amazing fighters, but they're fast and they'll be able to catch the orcs. Okay, let's get Scarbrand into position. The Scarbrand essentially acts as a chariot in melee. So, as long as we can cycle him in and out of combat... We can destroy the enemy army before our army even has to... Essentially do the cleanup. And Scarbrand does magic damage, which is great for Savage Orcs, which have physical resistance. So, we're just going to do as much damage as we can with Scarbrand. And then we'll send in the rest of the army to clean up. We'll just keep him away from the Lord. Oh. Yeah, he just took a big hit. <clears throat> things up a little bit. <clears throat> yeah. I'm just going to try to waste Sarcher's ammo because I don't really want it hitting Scarbrand any more than it already has. So... Yeah. I know it's cheesy, but I'd rather not have Scarbrand be a pincushion by the end of this battle. So, yeah. And then we'll give Scarbrand a little bit of a rest, because I'm sure he's exhausted by now. And the more tired he gets, the worse he's going to fight. So let's let him take a breather after this is over. And then... Good. And he can just stare at the army menacingly. For a minute or two. Okay. Back off. Okay. Now he can stare at them menacingly. Or not. Maybe now. Okay. They apparently really want to fight Scarbred, so let's get in there.
and if Scarbrand's fighting the cavalry, then their bonus against infantry will mean nothing. Okay, we've softened up the infantry, and Scarbrand's a little bit more beat up than than I would like. So let's go ahead and send in the the rest of the army. Because he's not going to heal in melee just yet. <clears throat> Let's get you guys in. And I'm going to keep this guy out of it. Just because, again, the, he's not an amazing fighter just yet. He will be a lot better eventually, but he's just not quite there yet. Okay, let's use our blood letters. To damage them a little bit, and Scarbrand can fight him a little bit. I just don't want him fighting the entire army. Okay. And now you guys can run him down. And they can start running stuff down. And what I found is using the mortal troops just to soak up damage and then have these guys act as flanking troops works a lot better than just charging these guys straight into battle. So, yeah, that's essentially what I'm going to do. Use the Chaos Warriors as the anvil and the Blood Letters as the hammer. And the Chaos Warriors are pretty good fighters on their own, so this should be fine. And now we'll have Scarbrand. Now that now that our infantry is pumped in around us, now we'll have Scarbrand beat the enemy general. And let's pop down the Horn of Corn on this group, so they'll get better stats. Okay, need you to help fight the faction leader. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, and you guys get around and just start running down the routing units. Okay, back off a little bit. Don't really want you guys fighting the cavalry. Now go get the Savage Orcs. Okay. Good. So we took a little bit more damage than I would have liked, but that's okay. Because after the next battle we'll have a chance for more replenishment. 
but let's just kill off this lord. That way we get a little bit more money, and I believe it gives a little bit more experience to Scarbrand as well, which we want to get Scarbrand leveled up as quickly as we can. I was hoping for a decisive victory, but close victory will work too. But you can see just by that little bit of using him as a chariot, Scarbrand can get hundreds and hundreds of kills in every battle. And once we get the Blood Feasters banner on him, and once we get him, he's got a skill in his skill tree that gives him regen in melee. So we can give it to one of our, we can give the Blood Feasters banner to one of our other guys. But yeah, while he's killing, he's also healing. So let's go ahead and get a little bit of replenishment. Yeah, that way Scarbrand's in a little better shape for the next fight. <clears throat> and another cool thing about about Scarbrand's faction is, well, let's get Root Marcher. Give him more. Give him more uh, movement range. Okay. Yeah. So right now I can't hit Agro Migdal just yet, but. Using Eternal War, summons a small hostile army that will attack the target army immediately. And, remember, we get extra movement range after winning a battle with Scarbrand. So, let's pop this down. Now, it says parent victory. We don't lose anybody, but it's mostly infantry in this army. So, let's use Scarbrand as a chariot again. Unfortunately, it'll damage him a little bit more but as long as we don't take too much damage we should be okay and again the next fight's gonna be fairly easy because just garrison so we'll get a chance to heal after that and these guys aren't gonna be able to run anybody down because no one's gonna route it's all demonic units. <clears throat> okay. Let's let them form up, because I want to get them into an infantry, into a into a blob of infantry. It doesn't look like they're gonna do that though. Keep the dogs out of there. The dogs need to get out of there. Okay, yeah, we're killing off the blood letters. Good. So that didn't go exactly how I wanted it to go, but it went well enough. Essentially, you just use these armies to get a little bit more experience, a little bit more money, and more skills, and primarily more movement range for Scarbrand. So, the outcome matters, but not... 
but not a ton. You're essentially using this as force march without being in force march. Okay, and let's get a little bit of replenishment for Scarbrand. And now on turn one, we're level three. Okay, let's get. I do like to sack a little bit of Scarbrand. But. This could help us as well. Replenishment rate would also be helpful. Let's get... Yeah, Scarbrand, you can make a ton of money from sacking settlements. But you also get a bunch of money from blowing stuff up. So, yeah, let's just go for the, the replenishment rate. So, it reduces our downtime. As Scarbrand, you don't really want to have... A lot of time without without fighting someone. You want to be fighting as much as you possibly can. And... I'd like to auto-resolve this, but no. Let's, let's fight it manually. We'll let Scarbrand fight a little bit. But for the most part, the army is going to have to do a good amount of this fighting. <clears throat> but once he gets the blood feasters banner then then we can we can be a little bit more reckless with scarbrand but until then he's not squishy but yeah not squishy but he does have a but yeah, running him through the enemy ranks does have a does have a habit of getting him damaged a little bit. So let's send the army up. And Scarbrand's just about the fastest unit in our army. Other than Other than the dogs. So Let's use... I'd like to try to split the army up if I can, but it's not big enough to... Or I don't think it's big enough to really try to split them up. Luckily, the archers didn't really shoot at Scarbrand, so... Let's close in on them. And let's make him rampage. I just want to keep the archers from shooting. I just want to keep the archers from shooting and get these guys into battle as quickly as we can. And try to mitigate the damage that we take. And it's, well, okay, as long as Scarbrand has more than one hit point left after the end of this battle, then the damage he takes in this battle is kind of irrelevant, because we'll have a turn to heal. These guys down. <clears throat> you guys hit the archers and try to sandwich them between the blood letters and and the dogs. And try to get rid of them quick. And now that the army is more or less in one place, Scarbrand can do his chariot thing even better. Give him some more melee attack. Okay, good. And they are shattered. Good. Okay, let's get you guys over here and help out.
Oh, they're fighting the Savage Orcs still. Okay. There we go. Good. And Scarbrand's in halfway decent shape. So let's run down as much as we can. And yeah, that's fine. Good. Decisive victory. Good. And again, another 180 kills on Scarbrand. Not too shabby. So, as of turn 6, Scarbrand will essentially have passive regen, because he's more often than not going to be in melee. So, he'll be healing, well, until he hits his battle healing cap. Talisman of Endurance, that'll be nice for Scarbrand. I'd like to get as much, as much ward save as I can on Scarbrand. And let's pop down. <clears throat> okay, so, Occupy Settlement, don't want to do that. Sack the Settlement, it's tempting. But, really, you get enough from post-battle loot that the sacking of minor settlements is kind of not necessary. Skulls for the Skull Throne is good for getting, for getting a quick amount of skulls. But this one here, Blood for the Blood God, gives us both replenishment and a second army. So, let's pop that down. So, this army will be immune to bloodthirst attrition for four turns, and then after that it will take attrition. So, this is essentially going to make a full stack for Scarbrand, sort of. Okay, let's get replenishment rate, and let's plop down, and we'll get... Honestly, I like having, like I said, I like having the uh, the mortal units as kind of the anvil, and then having the blood letters as the hammer. So let's get a marauder and a blood letter until we can get um, until we can get chaos warriors of corn. So let's get actually let's get two marauders. It's, we can afford it. We'll be in the red, but then we'll head over to Gorgazon next. And as Scarbrand, we can do diplomacy, but we're not gonna really have too many best friends in this campaign. A lot of people are going to be upset about, uh, at us for blowing everything up around us. So, not going to expect too many military alliances. Okay, let's get... Let's get some melee defense on this guy so he's a little bit more resilient in battle. <clears throat> and let's get moving. Okay, and then next turn we'll be able to get our chaos, our, our cultist of corn. Okay, and let's get another marauder. And did we equip? Yeah, we did. Okay, good. Cool. Okay. So another thing we need to do is get as much ward save on on Scarbrand as possible. So we need to get things like the collar of corn for fourteen percent ward save, I believe. The talisman of preservation. Oh wait, no, the Talisman of Preservation and 
I can't remember if the color of corn is a talisman or or an enchanted item. But either way, we just need to get as much ward save on Scarbrand as possible. Because that'll play really well into using him as essentially a one demon doom stack. And let's get our cultist. Ooh, disciplined. That'll play really well into our whole faction is melee. So having that extra melee attack will really help out. So let's have him. He'll end up meeting us at Galbaraz. Because that's going to be our next target. So, I might end up sacking Gorgazon just for the money. And then having the Blood Host blow it up on the next turn, that way they don't take attrition. Or I might have... Actually, no, I'll probably have the Red Crushers fight this battle. That way, again, they don't take attrition. And we don't really need to fight this one, so let's just auto resolve it. Yeah, that's that's fine. So the one bad thing about uh, blood hosts is they don't replenish, which is unfortunate, but not not uh, not a really big deal. Okay, let's plop down. Let's sack it first. <clears throat> and we'll get Scarbrand Blood Feast. And then Scarbrand can make his way off to Galbaraz. Or, yeah, Galbaraz. And this army. We'll raid. And then we'll blow up Gorgazon next turn. And in the meantime, let's get, uh, I want to get a Chaos Warrior, but they're very expensive, so let's get a Marauder with dual weapons. Yep. Yeah. Okay, and moving on. So, with Warhammer 3, I know that um, the game recommends certain campaigns like um, like the Empire, um, specifically Carl, Carl Franz, as a recommended first campaign. I do not recommend Carl Franz as a recommended first campaign because you have to deal with the vampires and... Vlad is extremely powerful, so he can give you a lot of trouble. Also, you have to deal with Festus the Leech Lord, and you have to deal with Norska. So, I wouldn't necessarily recommend Carl Franz as a beginner campaign. I would actually recommend Scarbrand. Because, so, <clears throat> in terms of... Empire management, empire building. At the very beginning of the campaign, it's somewhat limited. I mean, you can do it if you want, but for the most part, your prime objective is just causing as much havoc and mayhem as you possibly can. And so you get a good idea of the battle side of things 
with some campaign mixed in. So with Scarbrand, it basically gets you right into the action. It gets you right into the action of this is why you bought a Total War game for, for Total War. So, yeah, I would actually recommend Scarbrand as an initial campaign more so than the Empire or Cathay. <clears throat> because with those two factions, you're kind of beset by enemies fairly quickly, whereas with Scarbrand, you're really not beset by enemies, you are the enemy besetting everybody else. If that makes sense. Okay. Let's get... Talisman of Endurance. And just for right now, because we don't have the, uh... Because we don't have the Blood Feasters banner yet, getting a potion of healing nice and early is a godsend. So, we're gonna use that to... kind of act as a poor man's, um... Gore Feast, essentially. So, that way we can keep Scarbrand in the action for longer. And that way he can... Stack up more skulls for the skull throne and spill more blood for the blood god. Okay. And, okay. One person I would like to kind of negotiate with is Queek because I hate fighting Skaven. I hate fighting Skaven with a bloody passion. I love playing with Skaven, hate fighting against them. So, let's try to get a non aggression pack and a little bit of cash. And, apart from that, we don't really need to do a whole lot of diplomacy. Uh, it would be nice to get a non-aggression pack with him, but it's not that big of a deal. He's going to be a lot less annoying than this Gaven, so let's not say we did. Okay. So, we got the Blood Feasters banner. Good. Now, I always forget to do this. Let's get that. And then, this guy can actually have the Potion of Healing, since Scarbrand doesn't really need it anymore. But actually, no. No. This guy tends to be a better fighter. Like, he's more resilient than the Blood Reaper. So let's give it to him. And let's besiege with Scarbrand. Oh no, it's a Pyrrhic victory. Okay. And we'll have you link up with the army. He'll help with our replenishment after the battle. And you guys come over here as well. <clears throat> and let's get... Skull harvesting is good. The income from post-battle loot will really help. Uh, rage within... That would be useful, but the upkeep's not that big of a deal. I'd rather get more money than save money. At least right now. Although both are very important. Okay. I'm not gonna auto-resolve it, mainly because that guy's here, so... So... Let's...
Okay. Let's do this. So... This battle might be a little bit long, because sieges in this game do tend to take a little while, but the better we do, the better shape we'll be in for when that other army decides to come our way. So, let's do a good job on it rather than be, la be lazy and auto-resolve. You are going to stay out of this one. So just stay back here. The army, I'll use the army, but not yet. And the dogs get back here as well. Scarbrand's gonna be doing a lot of this on his own. So let's speed things up a little bit. And having that extra ward save on Scarbrand is really gonna help out. <clears throat> so we'll break down the door and start causing carnage. Actually, one thing we could do with the army... Well, that tower is active. Okay, you know what? Let's try it. Let's send you guys over this way. Yeah. And while Scarbrand is beating up the army... We'll send the we'll send our army over around this side and hit the town while it's still lightly defended. Okay, yeah, they're not falling for it. Are they? No, they might be falling for it. Maybe. Well, let's do as much damage as we can with Scarbrand, and then if the enemy army falls for it, cool. If they don't, I mean, they're still gonna die. things up a little bit. And Scarbrand, due to the amount of splash damage he does, he can kill the cavalry really quickly. Let's keep him from getting shot as much as we can. And by wasting the enemy's archer ammunition, it'll also make it a lot easier for our troops to get inside the city without having to worry about getting shot all the time. So, it'll help to heal Scarbrand and, and it'll help to damage their balance of power. <clears throat> okay. 
therefore making it easier to give them the army loss penalty. Unfortunately, yeah, Scarbrand's getting beaten up a little bit. But, it's fine. Okay, okay. Go ahead and fight those or war boys a little bit. Okay. okay. Let's get Scarbrand out of here, actually. And... Let's start sending the army up. Unfortunately, there are some orc air boys up there, so he is going to get shot a little bit. But it is what it is. Actually, let's get Scarbrand out for a minute just so he can just so he can rest. Because with him being exhausted, he is not going to be fighting very well. Let's get Scarbrand out of range of the towers. <clears throat> yeah, we'll let Scarbrand have a little bit of a rest and then let our, our troops do a little bit of the fighting. Scarbrand's back to being active. I don't really want to send him in while that lord's still there. So let's let the army do a little bit of work. And then, then we'll send Scarbrand in. Actually, Scarbrand's got enough health that... I don't really have to babysit him too much, so let's go in with him and start damaging primarily the archers. Those are going to be the biggest th threat for us, so let's deal with them. And then, once we've got the enemy lord tied up fighting our infantry, then we can go after him. And yeah, we don't really want to have Scarbrand in sustained melee combat. Otherwise, he is not going to do... Well, he is doing a little bit of healing. Okay, we're almost through. Good. But yeah, mainly we want to be charging with Scarbrand. Not necessarily just stick, stick there and fight. We want to pull in and pull out. Because, as you can see, he's healing. He's healing through all this. Okay, let's go. And, if he's fighting the archers, then the archers don't have a chance to shoot him.
which, by virtue of him being big, unfortunately he's also a big target. To getting shot. So... Charge into those orc air boys, and our guys will do okay fighting. And then we can have Scarbrand charge in. Okay, go ahead and hit the cavalry. Okay. You guys can get in there as well. And start fighting the infantry. Good, cavalry is getting obliterated. And let's send Scarbrand in to help out a little bit. Give him a good charge. Oh, that was a good one. That was a really good one. Yeah, we're already at almost 300 kills for Scarbrand. So he's doing a very good, a very good job. Okay. Let's keep all of our infantry fighting together. Yeah, spawn or do fine. Keep Scarbrand away from the Lord. He's good at fighting lords, he's just not good at fighting lords when they're surrounded by their by their own army. But now that he is in amongst all of our troops, now we'll be able to fight him a lot more effectively. So, let's go get him. You guys go out and get the archers. And you guys worry about the infantry. And once we kill the Lord, then it'll make it a lot easier to break this army.
and it'll give our infantry a chance for some vital experience. Then we'll have Scarbrand run him down. Vince. He's actually pretty good at running down characters. Okay, good. Infantry is breaking. Good. Come on. Just need to kill him. Oh, that's their faction leader, too. Good. So we'll keep him from leveling up. And there's the army losses. So, let's go ahead and kill him, though. Or wound him, at least. Good. Nice. So, all in all, not bad. 328 kills on Scarbrand. He ended up healing as much as he could. And our mortal infantry actually did fairly well. Almost 100 kills on a marauder unit is pretty good. So, casualties weren't terrible. And we got a decent amount of money. So, let's... Yeah, let us occupy it. Over here. Okay. And let's get. We'll get corruption. More melee defense. And we'll get more replenishment. Okay. Now, here. I actually want to have a soul keep so I can globally recruit the Chaos Warriors and let's just get the control building I can build in a minor settlement so let's get that'll help that'll help us make money in all the surrounding areas from post battle loot and you can help spread corruption. <clears throat> and let's get a... We'll get one blood letter. And then we'll move on to Grunty Mingle. And then... And then we'll start a war against Wurzag. Or maybe go hit Stormhenge. So I might actually send the Blood Host down to go deal with Stormhenge. Because that's essentially what you want to use your Blood Host as. Just a second army that you summon and you can use it to clean up low clean up loose ends. Okay, let's see if we can get a little bit of money from him. Emphasis on a little bit. Because I have no real need to fight him. Because his strength's not very good. And... Scarbrand's not going to be able to fight him until he lands. So... So yeah, we don't really need to fight him. So, let's get Unholy Resilience. So, Scarbrand, if he ever does get wounded, he'll come back faster. And he'll heal faster. Okay, so... Where did this army go off to? Let's... There it is. Now, I want him to see the blood host and go, oh, I got this. And then and then Scarbrand catches him in an ambush. So, let's see. We're really close, so I don't know if that's going to work. But 
Let's just see. If not, then we'll head down to Stormhenge and blow it up. <clears throat> nice. And this army can't replenish, so I really do not care what happens to it. Okay. Money's a little bit low. Although, we did get quite a bit of money from post-battle loot. And we do need skulls. So let's get some skulls. This guy does not need to be on horseback. Let's replenish troops and get that juicy corruption. And you can get more melee defense, make him a little better fighter. Okay, now, since, let's go take a peek at Stormhenge. They have nothing left. Okay, cool. So, this army can blow up Stormhenge. Meanwhile, Scarbrand is going to head north to Grunty Mingle. Okay. And let's get. God, that is expensive. Uh, let's get... Hmm. Now let's just wait. So, this is what I was talking about with, you don't really empire build a Scarbrand, because once you take the uh, the major settlement, or, I mean, you can take a minor settlement and do it that, and let the corn corruption occupy the major settlement, but if you do it this way, take the major settlement and then just let it eventually get colonized, it's a lot cheaper, and you don't have to use as many skills. And the Empire just kind of builds itself. <clears throat> uh, it's not that much money to sack it, so let's just skulls for the Skull Throne. And... We'll see if he can join us on our fight against Warzag. Which, spoiler alert, we're going to go after Warzag. Because his trait is really, really good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now let's pop down Blood for the Blood God. Because, essentially, this second army... Ooh, we got a bloodthirster in there. Will essentially work as a poor man's lightning strike. Which, speaking of lightning strike... Okay, let's get... Hmm... 
Reduce upkeep or now nah, let's let's get lightning strike. And then make this guy a better fighter. Start making this guy a good fighter. And let's get ready for the green skin invasion. Okay, so I don't really want to build up Agro Migdal just yet, because I don't know if I'm actually going to stay here or not. I might, but part of me doesn't necessarily want to. So, okay guys, I think that's going to do it for tonight. Thank you very much for watching. Appreciate the support. Uh, please consider following the channel. Right now we're at 17 subscribers. I'd like to see if I can get to 100 by the end of the year. Um, but I'm just very grateful for all of you that watch. So please consider subscribing, like the video, and leave a comment. Let me know what you guys liked, what you guys didn't like, and what you want to see in the future. So, alright, take care guys. Have a good night.